Read this before you do anything. Wiring can't have any gaps in it or electricity won't flow. Unlike a closed highway, a circuit must be closed for electricity to pass through. Electrical switches open and close circuits by flipping the switch on and off. Outlets effectively have an open circuit between the slots, but plugging things into the slots closes the gap, allowing electricity to flow through your lamp or whatever. Modern outlets have three openings, a neutral, hot, and ground. The neutral slot is longer than the hot slot. The ground hole is roundish with a flat spot. Circuits have a power source and a thing that gets power. In homes, power comes from the circuit breaker box and powers outlets that you plug things into. From the circuit breaker, a black hot wire supplies power to the outlet. A white neutral wire completes the circuit back to the breaker box. Sometimes the hot wire is red, and I'll explain this later. In modern homes, there is a ground wire that functions sort of like a backup neutral wire. While the neutral is connected to the device's circuit, the ground wire is connected to the metal body of the device. So in the case that the hot wire touches the metal body, current can still flow back to the panel and the circuit breaker will shut off. Otherwise, the ground wire does not carry current under normal conditions. Sometimes the ground wire is a bare copper wire instead of coated in green insulation. In some wiring, the ground is covered only in paper insulation. It functions the same as the green wire, as indicated by this chart. If routing through metal conduit, it's also possible to use the conduit as a ground. I'll talk more about that later as well. Note that, although it's visually easier to diagram circuits as a big circle, in reality, all the wires are bundled into one compact line. The circuit still functions the same, just in a tighter, easier to manage and install package. There are two main ways to route wires from the breaker box to its point of use. Flexible plastic wiring, called NM, or strands of wires pulled through metal tubes, called conduit. NM wires installed in walls and is susceptible to being struck by nails if you nail through the drywall, but it's the easiest to install. Conduit is harder to install initially, but wires are protected from damage inside the walls. It's also easier to pull new wires through conduit if you were adding wiring, in contrast to NM wire. Since conduit is metal, and therefore electrically conductive, and is also an unbroken line back to the breaker box, this is why it can be used as a ground line instead of having a dedicated wire. Wire gauge refers to the thickness of the copper in the wire. Thicker wire can carry more electrical current. This slide has a chart on gauges and their ratings, and some info on solid versus stranded wire. NM cable is color-coded to easily see what cable is rated for what amperage. This slide explains the numbering convention on NM cable packaging, which refers to the gauge and number of wires in the cable. It's worth noting that the ground wire in a circuit can be a lighter gauge than the other wires. The ground wire is only intended to pass current long enough for the circuit breaker to recognize something is wrong and then shut itself off. NM wiring and individual strands of wiring will have its specifications printed along the length of the wire. It will have the gauge as well as letters signifying its usage. Some wiring is rated for damp and wet applications, which have different definitions according to the NEC. Outlets are installed with the hot wire attached to the brass colored screws. Neutral is connected to the silver screws. Note that the hot screws are on the same side as the hot slots. Same for neutrals. Don't forget to ground these using the ground screw. You may notice the metal bridge connected to the screws on each side. If you're not wiring a multi-wire branch circuit, you don't need to worry about these and just attach the wire to one screw. Multi-wire branch circuits are used to power the top and bottom with a different hot wire, allowing the full rated amperage of a circuit breaker to flow through each one. This is useful in areas like kitchens where you might want to plug a power-hungry microwave and a toaster into the same outlet location. Multi-wire branch circuits have the metal bridge connecting the screws cut on the hot side. Switches just open and close the circuit, providing power, or not, to lights and such. The hot wire is split and connected to the two screws on the side of the switch. The neutral line remains unbroken. Power is accessible from the power lines at the circuit breaker box in your house. The breaker box contains individual circuit breakers. The breaker box will have two long vertical breaker buses, each attached to a different 120 volt main wire from the power lines outside. Circuit breakers attached to these bars, either one or both, depending on if you need 120 volts or 240 volts. There are also neutral bars that connect to the neutral line outside, and the ground which connects to the grounding rod driven into the ground outside your house or your metal plumbing in older houses. Each run from an individual breaker is called a branch. When someone refers to a branch, they're referring to the length of outlets, switches, or dedicated appliance outlets controlled by one circuit breaker. Breakers are used instead of old-fashioned fuses. Unlike fuses that are designed to burn out and need replacing after a single use, breakers can be tripped on and off many times. They can be rated from 15 amps and up, depending on the need. 
The rating is printed on the front of each circuit breaker. The amperage rating of the wire and the breaker it's attached to need to match. Breakers switch off when they sense current above their rating flowing through the circuit. This happens when you plug too many electronics into your outlet like a space heater and a toaster and a hairdryer all into the same branch. Breakers can also trip if there is a short circuit, which means unlimited current is allowed to flow through the circuit. Electronics are supposed to only draw as much current as they say they do. They will have a label stating their intended amperage or wattage draw. If it gives you watts, divide by 120. Two special kinds of outlets are GFCI and AFCI, which you may have seen in your bathroom or kitchen. They can sense electrical issues and shut off power right at the outlet, versus the circuit breaker which will only trip when too much current is running through the circuit. This is important because potentially, 5 amps could be running through your body and killing you. Without a GFCI, the circuit breaker wouldn't shut off because the circuit hasn't exceeded this rating. A similar idea works for arc faults. Note that any outlets downstream of a GFCI or AFCI outlet will also receive the protection. If the outlet trips, you can reset it by pushing the reset button on the outlet. Here's some final notes. I hope this video can fill in some gaps between other sources out there.